Identifying a watershed or catchment area on a map is extremely important for us as canyoners so that we can identify our risk of a flash flood. So a catchment area is essentially the place that when rain falls, it, it collects and feeds out through most likely the canyon that we're in. And so by identifying it on the map, we can cross check it with weather predictions or weather radar to know that if any impending weather is going to affect the water levels in the canyon that we're in. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to identify a watershed or catchment area on a map. And to do that, we're going to open up that same online map software that we used in basic navigation, which in my case is Oak Creek Canyon right here. So what we wanna know is on this map, if it were to rain all over this map, where in that area would it enter this creek, Oak Creek, and affect us potentially in the canyon? So the first step for identifying a watershed is to identify the exit point. And luckily we've already done that. So I have my exit point here, which is indicated by this red guy. And what I'm gonna do now is find out the ridges and drainages that will affect the water that comes into the canyon. And so a ridge is essentially an area like this that when water falls on top, it will go off either side and a drainage is going to be where that water will collect. And pretty much all topographic maps, maps can be divided in, into either ridges or drainages. So looking at this map, uh, one of the things that we can identify is how these topographic lines um, intersect with drainages. That's probably the easiest place to start. So here we can see maybe this, this dark line. We can start here at this 9,600 foot mark. We can see this line comes up and when it touches the canyon, it makes this V back this way. So that V actually points upstream. Now, that is a good general rule for identifying drainages is that the Vs, so here's another V coming off the side, see that little peak there, that V is pointing up, which this, these two little lines where the Vs are is a small drainage that will run eventually into Oak Creek here. Now a ridge on contrast is a V that points a different direction. So here again, let's, let's come over here. Here's a small drainage. We can tell that this is a small drainage because these V's right here are pointing upwards. And we can identify our ridge by coming along that line and actually seeing that these V's right here point a different direction. So they're pointing downstream. Uh, so using that, we're trying to find the outermost ridge for the entire catchment area. And so we'll start at this uh, this, ent this exit point here, and we're going to draw a shape around that, looking at the ridge as we go along. So I will click this, draw a line, and I'll say add line or shape. Um, so I'm gonna draw a shape, maybe in your mapping software if you're using something different from my maps. Sometimes they have uh, a polygon drawing tool. Uh, that's what you would wanna use instead of this line, but in, in my maps, I can either, I can make this line or shape, but it's not two different options. So I'll click that and I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna start following um, these ridges that come directly off the side. So right there, I can already identify, here is a tiny little drainage and here is a ridge. And I'm gonna start going up that ridge. So I've clicked first at that exit point. I'm coming up it and now I'm reaching a point where the water could go off this way or it could come back in the canyon. So I just, this V that's pointing um, downstream here is a ridge and it's kind of faint. So I have to make a little bit of a guess and it's okay that I'm making a tiny guess here. Okay, it looks like this is all a drainage here, but maybe it flows off about there. And eventually I might get to the more well-defined ridge like I'm seeing up here along this old Twin Peaks or near this old Twin Peaks. So I can follow that much easier and life is a lot quicker. So I'm following the top of that mountain ridge there. Now, when you begin to run out of space on this map and you can't scroll over, actually, if you just bring your mouse over to the edge, you can just barely push it and it'll start to 
uh, move the map. Okay, so I can continue along. I'm still getting a pretty well-defined ridge here. That's making life very easy. So I'm just clicking at each point as I go along to make my line. And at every turn, that's usually the best spot. All right, so now I'm getting to a little bit of a tricky area. It looks like there's a tiny drainage that goes that way and a tiny drainage that goes this way. So I'm actually going to follow that right up to White House Mountain. And it looks like on White House Mountain, if water falls this way, it will actually enter our creek. So I can continue to draw this along the ridge line here. And it's so, life is so much nicer when you have these nice lines, but sometimes you have to fudge in and it's usually right at the exit of the canyon where you'll have to do this. All right, so I'll drag that over so I can see. So again, now I'm losing my well-defined ridge. It's more like big U's um, that I'm looking at here. So best thing to do is just kind of choose the middle of that U and Follow that down there, little dip here, and I can complete my shape by coming back to my initial one. Great. Now, once I've completed that, it's going to say, it's going to give me a, a way to title this, so I can call this Oak Creek Watershed, or maybe I'll just call it Catchment Area, because I feel like Catchment Area really describes um, what's going to happen with that water there. So. What's great is as soon as I click OK on that and save that, it gives me these two little options down here. And the one on the left is actually the length of the line that I've drawn around. So that one's not really important to me. But the one on the right is actually calculating the area. So the area, the catchment area above the exit point of the canyon is 8.27 miles. And that's pretty big. Um, so I can actually zoom out and see it a little bit better. Maybe I'll click off of that. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the area that I need to be looking for. So if I were looking at a, uh, maybe a weather radar or a weather prediction, um, and I saw that it was going to run over this area, then that would tell me that maybe I should probably not go into the canyon. Yeah, so if there's any doubt, just don't go. But you know, when you think about this being eight square miles, or here we can measure it distance here, how long it is from, from here. Okay, so that's two miles, you know, distance that I've just measured there. 2.2 uh, .2 miles from the exit point to the very back part of this catchment area. So, you know, it's feasible that where, when I'm in the canyon, I can't see a giant rainstorm that's two miles away. Um, so if it's kind of an iffy day, I'm definitely not going because I won't be able to tell where that is. The other advantage to um, picking a catchment area, oops, let me just click off of that, to knowing where your catchment area is, is knowing your aspect. And so this map, um, it, you know, there's north, east, south, west, and weather um, typically moves across North America from the west to the east. And so, you know, in the canyon, I'm actually not, there's a mountain in my way, um, as the weather's coming across, it's going to come over that mountain and then dump into the canyon. And so I'm going to get no warning if an actual thunderstorm is coming uh, into this catchment area. So that's another good point of identifying your watershed is you can begin to know just by visual uh, which direction you need to be looking for that weather and whether or not you're going to be able to see um, that, that weather coming in. Great, so now that you know how to identify a watershed on a map, I want you to go back to that map that you made in basic navigation section and go ahead and draw the watershed around uh, your area. And once you've done that, uh, share it with us so that we could have a look at it.